Hi everyone. Welcome to my first series of build videos. Now this is going to be geared mostly towards people who are pretty new to machining, but hopefully people who are more advanced are going to get something out of it too. Uh, that said though, I want this to be a project that's going to be, first of all, useful. It's going to be a machinist screw jack. Um, and it's going to be something that's got a lot of different processes in it. You're going to be turning, you're going to be facing, boring, threading, drilling and tapping. There's going to be a little bit of milling in there. So there's a lot of different processes that a new machinist can cut their teeth on. That said, I'm going to be presenting this to people who are really new to machining, so I'm going to be discussing the basics of machining throughout. Hopefully that's not a turn off to people who already know what they're doing. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the first half of the main body of the screw jack, which is the threaded portion that actually has the jack riding inside it. And so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to cut it down to length, as well as how to make that bore and drill and tap the hole. Hi everybody. This is going to be the first in a series of videos on making a screw jack, which is a handy little thing to have around the shop. You can use it for leveling large pieces on the mill table, supporting stock that's sticking far out of the vise. I use it all the time to keep things from chattering because they're unsupported. You can use screw jacks for a lot of different things. This particular piece is also a really good illustration of how pretty much every lathe job is going to start. That process is basically facing one end until you get rid of all your saw marks, flipping it around, facing it off again, and then taking a measurement. At that point, you know exactly where the tip of your tool is, and since you've got the measurement, you'll know how far you are from your target, and you'll be able to move in an appropriate distance. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing you always do is touch off as lightly as you can with your tool. You can see there's a good bit of wobble on the end, so I might have to make a couple of passes here. Once I've touched off, I'll move in slightly, and I'll go ahead and feed across. Okay, I've got rid of all my saw marks. That means that this side is pretty much done. I am going to go ahead and break the edge with a file first, though. It's always good practice to break the edge just because then you won't have a big burr there that might cut you or your customer. Now a quick note about uh, cutting your stock to length. In this case the finished length of this part is going to be one inch. I generally cut my pieces at least an eighth of an inch or three millimeters long. Sometimes I might cut it a little bit longer if I'm going to need something to grip onto so that I can make every feature concentric, uh, but that's kind of a rare case. Usually an eighth of an inch is pretty suitable for most work, maybe 80 to 85% of the jobs that I do. So right now I have a clean face back here, and I have a saw cut face here that I'm about to take care of. But I have no idea where the tip of my tool is in relation to my part, and that's something that you always need to know. If you have no idea where the tip of your tool is, you have no idea how far to move in order to get to your target dimension. This is the exact same procedure. I'm just going to go ahead and touch off lightly. And I'll move in a slight amount. And I'm going to go ahead and zero my digital readout in the Z. If you don't have a digital readout, you could be using a dial indicator on a magnet, and you can zero that. OK, so now I've got two clean faces and I can take a measurement. So now I can go ahead and take this measurement and I should be somewhere around a hundred thousandths long. I always use the friction thimble or the ratchet thimble if my micrometer has one and I always give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure the micrometer is actually seated on the faces that I'm measuring. Otherwise you might feel it hop around a little bit in which case the micrometer is actually at a bit of an angle and you're not going to get an accurate measurement. So yes, I'm actually 99 and a half thousandths over my target diameter right now. Which means from the point where I zeroed on this face when I actually moved in for my first cut, um, I need to go 99 and a half thousandths. 
And you would do that either on your digital readout or with a dial indicator on a mag base. I'm not going to take all of that in one shot. I'll probably take 50 and then a couple of finish passes with a measurement before my last one. This should leave me with everything but 20. And I'm going to go ahead and take two finish passes with a measurement in between. So this should be everything but 10. The reason I do two finish passes is because a roughing cut does not really leave a great surface finish. So what you would end up doing is measuring all over the mountains that you've created rather than a nice smooth plane. So you always want to measure on a nice smooth finish if at all possible. Again, this should be everything but 10. So theoretically, I'm somewhere around uh, 1.010. And I'm just a couple of tenths shy of 10 thousandths over. So I'll take my last 10 and we should be good. All right, let's go ahead and double check our measurement. We should be right around one inch. And we're one inch and six tenths over. Well within our tolerance. So like I said earlier, this is pretty much how every lathe project is going to start. I mean, you're going to put the piece in there, you're going to face both ends and get the piece down to length. Now at this point, we're ready to move on to the rest of the features of the piece. And I've, I've got my print here, maybe not going to show up on camera. Uh, there's going to be a very shallow bore here, uh, eighth of an inch deep, um, 800 thousandths in diameter. And then we're also going to be drilling and tapping all the way through, half inch 20. Uh, we're going to do the drilling and tapping first, then we'll do the bore. And then we're going to spin it around and we'll cut this chamfer that uh, you can see on the print. I'm going to put a link to the PDF in the comments so you guys can do this yourself. That was a spot drill, so it gives the tap drill something to follow so it doesn't walk around. So like I said, this hole is going to be tapped half inch 20, and this is our tap drill size for that, which is 29 60 fourths. So whenever I tap, I'm going to go ahead and chamfer the hole beforehand. In this case, I'm going to be machining that chamfer away when I do that bore, but it really does help the tap start and it, uh, it keeps it from binding up right there at the beginning and breaking. So here I've got my half inch 20 tap and this is a spiral point tap, which is going to allow me to tap under power. I've got my tailstock totally loose and free to slide. So as soon as the tap grabs, it's going to feed itself in. And then at the end, you just throw it into reverse and crank back out. I've got the lathe turned down, uh, in this case, uh, to 50 RPM. Um, I generally don't like to tap super fast, uh, especially uh, you know for you guys out there who are new to this. Um, you don't want to tap super fast because, in this case, it's 20 threads per inch, which means with each turn of the chuck, you're feeding towards the headstock by 50 thousandths of an inch, which is the pitch of the thread. So that can get you in trouble really fast. Uh, one thing that you can't see off camera is I've actually got uh, 
my tailstock quill extended almost all the way and that's so that I don't run my tailstock into my carriage uh, when it gets through the part. So you can see once, uh, once I threw it into reverse it just fed back out and I put some gentle pressure backwards on the tailstock so that when I got to the end of the hole it would slide back. Okay, now we're ready to bore the shallow little pocket there on the back side. And uh, the way this is written, uh, we've got 800 thousandths plus 4 minus nothing. So what that means, we're actually going to be aiming for 800 two thousandths. Uh, likewise, the depth of it, it's pretty shallow. Uh, it's 125 plus 10 minus nothing, which means we're actually going to be aiming for 130. Why am I picking those numbers? Uh, if we aim for the middle of our tolerance, which is plus two there, plus five there, then we've got wiggle room either way. We can miss it one way or the other, and we're still going to be within our tolerance. Whereas if we aim for 800, or if we aim for 804, then if we miss it the wrong way, we're out of tolerance. Uh, likewise with that. Now, these are strange tolerances. Why do we have those? In this case, it's because there's a mating part. There's a boss on these other extensions, and they're going to fit in there, and you want to make sure that they don't fit in um, with resistance. So the mating part actually has an 800 minus 4 plus nothing and a 125 uh, plus nothing minus 10. So they should fit together with no interference whatsoever. Just like any other tool, when you're using a boring bar, you have to touch off. We're going to have to touch off on the end in order to get our Z depth, our 125 plus 10 minus nothing. And we're going to have to touch off on the inside. That's a little trickier here because the inside is now threaded. So what we'll do is we'll just touch off on the end. We'll move in to some spot that we know is not our 800 thousandths, um, something that's maybe just the outside of the chamfer on this threaded hole and we'll just move in a little bit and get a measurement. That way we'll know where we are. So I've touched off on the end, and now I've gone ahead and zeroed my digital readout. Of course, if you just have a uh, dial indicator, do that too. I'm gonna move closer to the center here, and then just move in a little ways. One quick thing about the depth of the hole, even though I'm aiming for 130 thousandths deep, I did not go straight to 130 thousandths deep. I stopped 10 thousandths shy of that on my digital readout because I don't know how heavy I touched off on this end. Maybe I touched off a half a thousandth, maybe I touched off five. Uh, they look remarkably similar. So <clears throat> I don't want to assume that I touched off perfectly every single time and then miss my tolerance because I actually touched off heavily. So this way, this is going to allow me to take a measurement on diameter and on depth and get it right on the money. Okay, so we have our hole initially bored out. Uh, we know that we're probably a little shallow on depth, and we know that we're nowhere near the diameter. So we need to get measurements on both of those. Um, now normally, I do not like to use the inside measuring jaws on a pair of calipers on smaller holes like this. Uh, right now we're right around a half an inch. The reason is you've got this uh, flat on the edge of the jaws and it tends to give you a smaller reading than what you actually have. In this case though, we don't really have much of a choice. The hole is so shallow that you can't get a telescoping gauge in there uh, with any degree of accuracy. So we're just going to have to go with it and let's see what we have. It looks like we've got about 567 thousandths, 567 and a half. I'm going to wait on the depth measurement until we're closer to the diameter that we're shooting for, just because I'll have a little more surface at the bottom of the hole to measure onto. What I did at the beginning of this cut was re-zero my digital readout, and in this case I actually just punched in the numbers for the measurement that I had. So I set it to 567.5 thousandths at the spot of the last cut. 
Um, so this past cut I just moved it up to 600 and then I'll probably move it up to 700 and then I'll do 750 and take a couple of finish passes with measurements in between. Um, I then moved in to the same Z measurement that I had before, the 120 thousandths depth, which again I know is shallow. At this point, I've got my whole board to approximately 25 thousandths below my target diameter. Again, my target diameter is 802 because I'm aiming for the middle of my tolerance. My tolerance is plus 4 or minus nothing. I've also got the depth of the hole uh, within about 10 thousandths of my target as well. So I'm going to get measurements on both the diameter and the depth. But before I do the depth, I've got to take off the burr that's raised on the edge of this hole. It's not a very big burr, but even the smallest burr can affect your measurement. I mean, it might easily be a thousandth of an inch, and if you've got a tight tolerance, that can mess you up. So, always remember to remove burrs before you measure. So to remove the burr, I'm just using a triangular scraper, and I'm just going to gently go along the edge of the hole, just by hand. Like I said, it's not a very big burr, so it's not going to be difficult to remove. You could use one of those rotating deburring blades, uh, but in this case I think the hole is a little too shallow. It's not going to be easy to get it in there without barring the bottom surface. Showing about 26 or 27 thousandths shy of our diameter tolerance. And then I'm going to use the depth rod on my calipers to get the depth of the hole. and I'm showing 120 and a half there. So that's right about where I should be. So my last pass is going to take this up to diameter and down to depth as well. so looks like we're within our tolerance there we're at 131 and a half on the depth also within our tolerance so at this point this side's done I'm gonna go ahead and use a file and break the edge on the outside as well just so I don't cut myself later Again, it is always good practice to break the edge of anything you make with a file. Before I turn this around and start machining the chamfer on the other side, I am going to bring in a countersink and chamfer the edge of that tapped hole, uh, just because I've kind of rolled over the edge with the action of boring. So this will clean it up and I can always run the tap through later.